Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for having me here. And yes, uh, at some point of my life, I decided to change something, and I did it. I, I became a, a front-end developer, and I'm happy to be here. And uh, I'm happy to share my experience creating post-CSS plugins. Uh, let's quickly run through the basic concept of post-CSS. Uh, post-CSS is a tool to, con uh, to transform CSS, CSS files, with JavaScript. And uh, the, the basic thing is uh, one part of the post-CSS takes the just ordinary text file, like uh, CSS file, uh, pass it uh, to the AST, abstract syntax tree, and after that, another part of the post-CSS can uh, serialize uh, AST back to the text file. So that's just simple. And post-CSS actually is useless without plugins, because post-CSS works in a way uh, that uh, it preserves all white spaces, all new lines. And uh, if, if you don't have any plugin in the chain, you um, you get the same same text file as as was in uh, in input. So uh, please raise your hand uh, who use PostCSS on your daily basis. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Most of you, actually, I think uh, you use PostCSS even you don't know that it, it is because you use auto prefixer. Yeah, it's well known plugin. Uh, for post CSS, yeah. Uh, actually, it's uh, auto prefix started is as a as a separate tool, but later it became as a post CSS plugin. Uh, let me show. Let me highlight some some other useful plugin. Uh, you may find all uh, the not not of all the most of interesting plugin on post CSS page. Uh, basically, the one part of the plugin can can use as the most advanced features, and, uh, which which are not implemented in browser yet. Uh, next plugin can isolate your styles. Uh, you may know that process, uh, or you may know that CSS don't don't have any scopes. It's just global, and you can write all the way uh, the styles. But uh, some techniques can isolate your styles. Uh, other other part of the plugins can can work with assets like images, SVGs, and so on. It's very handy. Uh, there are plugins which don't process any styles. Actually, <laughs> they process JavaScript or uh, data structures. It's it's not 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 a rocket science uh, because plugin is a JavaScript and you can produce anything you want. Uh, if you if you use a lot of styles to generate circles or triangles in your styles, you can use their plugins very handy to, to generate some parts of code. Uh, another part of plugin can generate another uh, things like uh, popular clear fix or focus or aspect ratio uh, things. So it's very handy. If you really miss uh, uh, programming features in PostCSS, which are not programming language, which is not programming language, you can use uh, plugins to, to create conditionals, loops, and so on. And we have a very interesting plugin called StyleLint. It, it not uh, generate something, or it not transform your CSS or your styles. It just uh, yelling at you because you're doing something wrong, not according to your styles, uh, style guides. It's just uh, the, this plugin uh, allows the, your team to, to work in a way uh, that every developer creates styles uh, based, based on, uh, on uh, style guides. Very handy. So a lot of plugins. and. You found uh, you found the right plugin uh, you need uh, to solve some task, but the plugin uh, work in a way that you are not expected. What can you do? You can accept the situation and just 
Just use it as is. Uh, you make a pull request uh, in the plugin and hope that the uh, auto can accept your pull request and your, your changes. And you can write your own plugin. So uh, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you may guess the third one is my way to, <laughs> to work. Uh, so uh, that's how I write, uh, wrote my first post-CSS plugin. Uh, the task will, will, uh, was very simple. Uh, I, have, uh, I have to support IE8 uh, on, on the project, uh, and you may know that IE8 doesn't work with media queries, and I just need to strip down all media queries from my mobile-first styles to, to have something like this. Have something like this, and ju just simple. Uh, but uh, and there were some plugins which do the uh, similar things, but uh, for my case, uh, uh, the, uh, those plugins broke my styles. I don't know uh, what happened there, but I need to uh, to do the task very quickly, and I just wrote uh, my own plugin which breaks, uh, which removes media query. This was my first plugin. Yeah, it's it's available. Uh, it's still available, and it's it's worked. Uh, let me let me share with you the some more examples. Uh, some uh, some uh, let me uh, let me describe uh, a real world cases. Uh, I. Uh, I worked with a junior developer uh, and tried to learn, uh, tried to teach them uh, to how to use some tools, some modern tools like PostCSS, Webpack, Babel, and so on. And those those tools can can help to to solve some cases, some interesting tasks. And uh, I offered my colleague uh, to to create a plugin which replace one color to another color in the styles. So uh, we have a configuration, and we have a color which we need to find, and we have a color which we would like to have in styles in output. Uh, and so we have a, a many, form, many, uh, many forms uh, uh, of the colors, like keywords, hex color, RGB function, HSL function, and anyway, we we, we need to match all this information and replace to, to another information. Uh, before I continue, uh, I would like to highlight the, this link. Uh, uh, here is a full documentation uh, uh, for PostCSS, and uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of examples uh, how to how to use. Uh, Concrete method, but uh, I need I only need to show the some basis uh, which which in, which we need to know. Uh, there are only four types of nodes, like rules, declaration, add rules, and comments. That's all. Nothing nothing more. Nothing complicated. And so uh, uh, there are relevant methods to walk through the rules, through the declaration, through the add rules. Uh, through the comments, and you can basically walk through all nodes, uh, regardless of their types, uh, if you want. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to replace one color to another. Uh, all colors are in declaration, yeah, and we only need to to use one method. Uh, here is an example uh, what we have. Uh, in our abstract syntax tree, yeah, uh, we have a uh, so styles like this, only only that simple three lines of of styles, and in abstract syntax tree we have the following uh, following data structure. Uh, here is a root node, the rule node, which contains the selector id main uh, div with class sidebar. As, as on the line number one, and uh, there are child nodes 
like background property with value white and color property with value RGB. So as as on lights up. Yep. And this is this is the code of our plugin. Only nine lines of code. So it's very very simple. Uh, so we walk through the old declaration in the file. Uh, if we found the declaration with the value we need, we just replace this value. So, but <laughs> actually, everything will be simple, uh, uh, but it's not. Uh, there are different ways to, to write a color. Uh, the, it, it can be a keyword, it can be a hex value, uh, 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 as I mentioned before, and color function and transparent colors, and uh, we have to match the different, different things in our, uh, in our styles. Uh, we found a library uh, to convert one color uh, to another color, uh, I mean one color form to another color form. So if you have a, a color function, for example, we can uh, get all possible representation of that color function. Uh, that, uh, that helps us a lot, actually. So another problem uh, that they have short-term properties, like border, for example, and we don't have uh, an idea where the color is, actually. It can be from the beginning or at the middle. And so, yeah. Actually, it's, it's hard to find the color there because OCSS stops at the level uh, of property. It don't pass the value of the property, actually. And that, that is a problem. You can, regexp, uh, you can use regexp, uh, for example, if you're really sure what you're, you're, what you're going to do. But uh, I have an idea. Uh, we have a, another CSS parser, like CSS3. Uh, it's, it's modern. Uh, it only Two, two, two and a half, maybe years. Uh, it's, it, it was written two and a half uh, years ago. Uh, also, the Russian developer Roman Dvornov, and it can work uh, on a different. Uh, f it, it can start parsing uh, your styles from a different uh, level, like uh, like from value uh, or like from a root node or any rules and so on. And this can help us to pass the value. Actually, uh, I want to warn you uh, because post CSS and CSS3 has a completely different uh, representation of the abstract syntax tree. It have completely different. Uh, uh, they have completely different APIs to, wo to work uh, this abstract syntax tree, and you always ha have to keep in mind on which level you are. Uh, let me show some quick examples of the uh, abstract syntax tree uh, which uh, CSS3 generate for us. Uh, this is, a, for example, uh, the short end property, and we have dimension with units, uh, we have uh, identifier, and we have uh, hex color. Yeah, it's completely accessible to us. Uh, this information is accessible to us. And if we try to pass uh, ordinary keyword, uh, we have uh, the structure like, like this. Uh, if, if it's RGB function, the structure will be like this. Uh, and we only need to know uh, about identifier, hex, and color function, actually. Uh, but there are a lot of other nodes you, you may find uh, using this link. Uh, but uh, they are irrelevant for, for the current talk. Uh, the CSS tree uses the visitor pattern to traverse the tree. Uh, it, it has only one, one method to walk, just, just walk. Uh, after that, uh, you provide the type of node you're interested in. For example, in my case, it's just identifier, and, post, uh, and then CSS tree invokes my function, my callback function, every time it uh, found the identifier uh, with node, item, and list. Node is a current, current node in abstract syntax tree. 
uh, an item and list is a uh, helpful structure to manipulate parents, child, nodes, neighbors, and so on. So you can access to any, uh, any node in, in your file, basically. So uh, when we found the keyword, uh, we, need to, we need to find, we replace the current node with another node, like, like this. Uh, uh, the same uh, the same procedure we have to apply to the hex color and color function. Uh, I I just skip this part because it's very similar to to this I showed before. But I have to mention that uh, working with RGB function or H HSL function is much complicated because you you. Uh, you can't just compare a value with another value because uh, you, can com you have to compare the color components sepa separately. Uh, it's quite a bit tricky, maybe. And the problem is uh, in specification, you can use the absolute values like uh, 47, 78, or you can, rel you can use uh, relative values in percent. And this can blow your mind, actually. Uh, when we created our plugin, I, I have to remember it, just, it was just an educational task for, for, the, for the junior developer. Uh, we just skipped this part. Uh, we, we know uh, that it's, it's possible, but it's not useful in, in real life. And takeaways from, from this part. We learned about HT Explorer. Uh, I, will, uh, I will mention uh, about this tool a bit later. Uh, we understood the API of both CSS and CSS3, how it works in general. Uh, we, we created a plugin which makes uh, more than just a, uh, just a find and, and replace in your text editor. For example, if you if you need just replace a color with another color only once, it's, it's really easy to do in your text editor, in your ID. But if you uh, have, to, have to do this task uh, uh, several times, it's better to write uh, uh, just a couple of bits of code and, uh, and do it and, uh, and run it as you need it. So uh, my, my, next, uh, my next case, uh, will be more down to earth uh, because we implemented it for for the real project. Um, it was uh, it was a site for uh, for the huge educational organization CVC uh, Cardiff and Wales College, and they have a, a brand colors. Uh, and the client asked to use their scholars on the, uh, according to the following strategy. Uh, we use uh, their three colors for the main site, uh, their three colors for, for the portal, uh, student portal, uh, their scholars for the business side, and their scholars for, in, for the international side. But anyway, it, all their scholars uh, follow their logic like primary colors, secondary, and accent colors. Uh, that was just rules from the client. And uh, we created uh, some blocks, like, like their styles. And if we put uh, this piece of the content on the website, it will look like this. If we put this, the same content on the student portal, it will look like this. And the, the, in the, for, for the international side, and for the business side. So, in 2018, uh, probably we would prefer to use uh, CSS custom properties, and our styles will be as follows: just five lines of code, and uh, task uh, task is solved. But uh, our clients uh, actively use IE. 10 and IE 11, and we have to deal with this. 
uh, its custom properties uh, is not working there. Uh, we started to discuss the possible approaches how to solve this problem, and uh, we decided to, to give a try to PostCSS, actually, to generate uh, the styles for us. Uh, our objectives. Uh, developers write a uh, style as just for the main site. It, uh, we don't have to keep in mind uh, on which on which side, on which color we uh, we have to use uh, uh, for for the widget, for example. We just write uh, uh, write our styles for for the main site. Uh, we use block uh, and element modifiers to set the colors. Only uh, only on in these rules we can apply color information uh, for the widget or for the element. And if if you would like to, to change the dimension, for example, we may use uh, its without modifier. If you, uh, if you would like to apply color information, we, uh, we use only uh, modifier primary, secondary, and accent. And plugin generate the additional rules for us uh, based on a, on a scheme. Uh, this is a, an example for, uh, of our configuration. Uh, so it's just uh, one section for the primary uh, colors, and there are secondary and accent colors with the similar information. Uh, we, we would like to match uh, this color and replace uh, to their colors for the important and, and business uh, and international uh, themes. So the developer write only first line, and additional line uh, will be generated by post CSS for us, for free, actually. Uh, let me quickly run through the code. It's, it's, it may not look that simple as as was before, but uh, please be attentive. It's not, not a rocket science. First of all, we work all rules. At, in, in this plugin, we have to generate additional rules, so we have to deal with rules. Uh, we get a uh, a, a, a part of configuration on uh, at the first uh, based on uh, our uh, based on the block element modifier naming convention we find the modifier and return the uh, the proper part of the configuration uh, so uh, later we have to generate additional po additional rules based on uh, on their lines yep we map the theme case to the theme rules. Yep. And we clone, we clone the source node and replace the, replace the inner stuff of this node uh, with a declaration processor for the current, current part of the configuration, yep. like this. And so uh, other things, uh, should be familiar to you, uh, as I mentioned before, it just uh, just uh, walk through the AST and visit hex color and functions. Uh, we don't need uh, other other things uh, because we we use uh, we uh, we write styles only using these uh, uh, these color notations, and after the work has been done, uh, we just need to serialize uh, the values and return it to, into the declaration. Uh, the interesting side effect uh, of our plugin uh, was that it can link our styles. If we have a modifier, but uh, our plugin don't change any color, it's it, it's, a flag, it's a flag for us that something weird is going on because we don't allow such situation. And so we raise a warning and the developer can, uh, can look into the styles and fix their mistakes. It's very handy. Uh, our plugins also work uh, with uh, uh, very tricky selectors like 
uh, block modifier and element modifier uh, with something, uh, with pseudo uh, classes and pseudo elements also. It's, it's achieved only using the proper rig expansion, actually, but uh, it, it was very nice. Uh, another cool story about this plugin is our designer uh, came to us and asked if it's possible to create a, a bit lighter color or a bit darker color. Uh, for example, um, we need to use uh, it as a button or the overlays, for example. We told, us, uh, we told him, yeah, sure, mate, no, no worries. We create all you, all you want, all you need. Yeah, and it's, it's really simple. I know that if, if you are going to work with lighter and darker shades, you have to convert your color presentation to the HSL. Uh, who is attentive and found the something similar in this table? Yeah? Any guesses? Yeah. So uh, we have uh, we have changes only in light lightness component here. Yeah, the hue and saturation component rem remains the same. And so, uh, our approach to solve this problem is, is the following. We have a color uh, in our styles. We, can, uh, we convert the color into HSL format. We found the, the, same, uh, uh, the color with the same hue and saturation values in our configuration. And we have a delta for, for the lightness component. It's 20% in this, in this example. After that, uh, we found the target color in, in configuration, convert it to HSL uh, color space, add the 20% to the, to the lightness part here, and so they get the, a bit lighter color uh, for another theme. For another this also worked for darker shades and with no issues. It's, it was really cheap and solve all these problems. Yeah, very handy. Uh, takeaways uh, from this part. Yeah, these plugins can help uh, the team keep our CSS clean and tidy. Yeah. Uh, we don't know uh, anything about theme, about colors. We only write styles for, for the main site. Uh, and the plugins can, can process the light and dark shades almost for free for us. And uh, generated styles works in all browsers. So we solved the problem and made, made the client happy. Uh, let, me, uh, let me say some words uh, about the abstract syntax tree and the tools which we use to, to work with it. Uh, I mentioned before that it, it's, it was IST Explorer. It, it's a very handy tool to work with AST uh, in general. Uh, it, can uh, it can visualize you for CSS, AST, CSS3, AST. It also visualizes uh, JavaScript, AST, like Babel, and many other programming languages. You uh, check, check this out, and you can play with this disease. Uh, on this slide, uh, here the simple plugin. 27 lines of code to, to create a negative color. Yeah. Here, here's the original color, and here's the result, the uh, just, just negative color. And uh, I would like you to, to recommend this, this article uh, from Jane Steinbach, uh, write me your first CSS plugin. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of uh, uh, recommendation and examples how to start create your own first CSS post CSS plugin. And I hope I inspired you and give some ideas how to how you can use post CSS in your in your routine on your daily project. And please be inspired, be passionate and love what you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk. I'm inviting you to have a short interview.
Yeah, thank you. Now I want to introduce you to our co-host, uh -huh. Coco Co. Yep. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't don't worry about her. She won't disturb you. Anyway, uh, the first question. Uh, let's start with creating a holy war. Like uh, the first question is, which one is better, post CSS or CSS three? Which one you like the most out of those two? Uh, these tools, it's quite similar, but uh, this um, uh, I can compare because uh, PostCSS has a great infrastructure uh, at, uh, for processing styles. Uh, for you know, it has many plugins and so on. PostCSS three is very uh, b uh, it, it has very performance. Um, um, it's it very performant uh, tool and uh, it. I don't know. There are not not much plugin. I I only know the plugin for mini minification of styles, which also created by Roman Varnov. Uh, but I, I I think they they are, they are similar. If if you if you need to to work uh, this with styles uh, on a deep level, for example, uh, as work with values in my uh, like in my cases, uh, I. I would prefer to recommend to use CSS3 and, and that's all. But uh, when, we, when we have uh, some plugins in our project as auto prefixer and others, it's better to use PostCSS in general because uh, it passes only once into IST and then you can apply some plugins in, in order and then serialize them back. It's, it's just more, more efficient to, to work with. Okay. Working style. And uh, what else do you missing from those tools? What uh, what do you want uh, for those developers to implement? What's your feature request? The biggest feature request for those libraries? Uh, as for post CSS, uh, I really miss the uh, the parsing of inner structure like uh, Roman did in in his tools, uh, in his tool. Uh, but in general, that's uh, that's okay uh, at at the current level. I, it might, uh, it might be better to, to have a tool for vi visualization like uh, uh, ST Explorer, because it's not not so easy to to get the idea of AST for for the for the junior developer, for example, and you have to understand all the S connection between nodes and so on. It's it's not it's not what just just. Just uh, like inside, I, you have to to learn and understand it. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.